Hello, today we're going to start Unit 1, Ratios and Proportions. This will be the very uh, first lesson we do on this topic. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about understand the concept of ratio and use a ratio language to describe a ratio relationship between two quantities. So essentially, I'm going to teach you how to read a problem and determine the ratio of, for example, boys to girls or uh, apples to oranges. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to discuss is uh, how do you write ratios? There are three different ways of writing a ratio. The first one is by using the word two. The second one is by using a colon. And the third way is to write it as a fraction. Also, up above on the screen, you will see the definition of a ratio. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. So you are comparing A to B, which is two different quantities. Uh, all of these are, are read as A to B. Uh, also keep in mind that ratios should always be written in simplest form, which is something we will discuss towards the end of this lesson. So here is an example of a ratio that utilizes numbers, so we're going to talk about how do you read it. The ratio of wings to beaks in the chicken coop was 2 to 1 or 2 over 1 or uh, 2 colon 1. Regardless of how it's written, you will always read it as 2 to 1. Okay, and all that means is that for every two wings, there is one beak. So you're comparing the two quantities there. What is the ratio of lizards to bears at the zoo? This is our first practice problem. I do want to let you know that anytime we do problems in this lesson, you can pause, um, solve the problem on your own, and then hit play again. That's where I will go over the question, explain everything, and give you the final answer. So at this point, you can go ahead and pause if you like to do so. The ratio of lizards to bears. I like to write those terms out. You are, uh, you can go ahead and highlight them. You can use a pen or a pencil and make circles on those terms. That way you know that those are your areas of focus when answering these questions. Secondly, I want you to pay very close attention to the order of the numbers. If they are asking you for the ratio of lizards to bears, make sure that is the order you answer the question in and don't flip it. So I have three lizards and there are two bears. So your final answer here will be answer choice C, three colon two. Let's try another example. What is the ratio of lizards to tigers at the zoo? We're going to go ahead and identify how many lizards there are in our table. There's a total of three. There are four tigers. So your final answer is the ratio of lizards to tiger is three to four, which is answer choice A. Simplest form. This is very important when solving ratios. Simplest form, just like the term hints, it's the simplified version of your answer. Uh, let's say the ratio of monkeys to birds is six to nine. Can you simplify this? Yes, you can. How do you simplify it? Divide them both with the exact same number. The final answer that you should be able to see in a multiple choice question or uh, anywhere else, or the way you should write it as a final answer is two to three. So this was monkeys to birds. Another thing I want to mention to you is that in ratios, you always want to make sure that next to your number, either before or after, you always write what it represents. What that does is it helps you avoid a lot of errors. Um, getting confused with what number represents what, what term. So you can abbreviate it, you don't have to spell the whole thing out, but just get in the habit of labeling what, 
6 represents what 9 represents. It's just good practice. Um, so that means that for every two monkeys, there are three birds. Moving on to another practice problem. What is the ratio of monkeys to tigers at the grocery store? Be sure to write your answer in the simplest form. Here you are trying to find the ratio of monkeys to tigers. Let's go ahead and identify, identify how many monkeys we have. In the table there are six. There are four tigers. You can simplify it by dividing them both with two, which will give you three over two as your final answer, which is answer choice D. Which ratio matches the sentence? For every nine students in line, there are 18 legs. Parentheses simplify. Um, right now, I, ha I am giving you uh, some hints by writing parentheses, simplify, etc. in the parentheses, but on your test or on a quiz or an assignment that you may come across, that information may not be given to you. So if I say 9 to 18 and I simplify it, it would be 1 to 2, which will give answer choice D, and that is the correct answer here in this question. On the screen, you can see some practice problems. There's a total of five practice problems where you are to reduce each one of these ratios into simplest form. I'm going to let you guys try these problems. If you click again, you should be able to see the final answers. I will go ahead and do problem four here so that you get an idea of how to do these problems. You are just simplifying them. So in order to simplify these kind of questions, what you need to do is find a number that you can divide both the numerator and the denominator with. In this case, that would be the number five. So you can either write it as nine over four, you can write it as nine two four, you can write it as nine colon four. These are the three ways we talked about in the very first slide of how you can represent a ratio after you uh, figure out your answer. So, um, those are all three correct answers. On this screen here, you have three practice problems. These are your word problems. Uh, again, I'm going to work on problem number one and let you guys work on the other two on your own. If you click on the slide or play go through the video, you should be able to see the correct answers. For every five boys on a softball team, there is one girl. What is the ratio of boys to girls? And they are telling you there are five boys for every one girl on the softball team. All you have to do is find the ratio of boys to girls. So your final answer is five ratio one, five over one, or five to one. You can represent your answer in either one of those, those three forms. So, um, and uh, I'm going to let you try question two and question three on your own, and then you can check your answers by clicking again on the slide or clicking on the video. Here is another practice problem, multiple choice question. Percy's Pizza, pizza Parlor sells three sizes of pizza. What is the ratio of the diameter of the large pizza to the diameter of the medium pizza? So in your table, you have been given all that information. We are trying to find the ratio of the large pizza to the small pizza or I'm sorry, to the medium. So I want you to take a look at 17 over 14. Can you simplify that? Is there a number that you can divide both 17 and 14 with? Probably not. So that will leave us with answer choice C as our correct answer, which is 17 over 14, and that is how you do this problem. Next question. 
Rita reads three times as many fiction books as nonfiction. What is the ratio of fiction books to total books? So this question is uh, similar to what we have been doing, except the terminology is a little bit different, which makes it a little bit more challenging. I'm going to pretend and use some number here. Uh, they did not tell us how many fiction or nonfiction books there are. You kind of just have to make your own numbers and use this piece of information here to get the answer. So let's say there are two nonfiction books, three times two would be six. I'm making these numbers up just so you know to fulfill the requirements of this problem. So at this point, you are going to find out the ratio of fiction books to total books. So six fiction books based on the scenario, and a total is eight. Six plus two is eight. This is not fully simplified yet, so you're going to have to simplify this question. When you do so, you will divide them both with three, or I'm sorry, two, which will give three over four as your final ratio. Now this number that I have chosen, it could have varied, you know, depending on what you start with. This could be a different number because you're doing three times the nonfiction book. So it could be two, three, four, five, whatever you want to decide. You could have picked one. Uh, needless to say, when you simplify your answer, you should get three over four, no matter what you choose here, because the ratio is the same. So uh, keep an eye on what the question is asking. If you need total, make sure you add the two. All right, and that concludes our lesson. Um, hopefully this will help you understand the basics of ratios where you have just learned how to write ratio in three different forms, how to simplify ratios, and um, how to compare either two quantities to each other or a quantity to a total. Uh, we will build upon this knowledge further into the rest of the lessons. Thank you for watching.